Hey everybody, welcome to the video. In this one, we are talking about masks. Now masks are super important in building photo compositions and give you a lot of power and a lot of diversity when you are building your composition. So let's get started by just going up to Window, Studio, Reset Studio, just to make sure that our screens look the same. And if you look at my layers panel on the right, I have a picture here of a guy, this gentleman here seems happy enough. And to be very literal here, I have a mask that I'm putting on top of his face. So I'm going to show you how masks work um, with this first example. So I've got this guy at the bottom, I got a mask on top. Let's look at our masking button on our layers panel at the very bottom here. So this button here, this is your masking button. If I click on this, we have a bunch of options. We're only worried about mask and empty mask for now. So I've got my layer selected, the mask. I'm going to go to my mask button and put a mask on it. I hope that's not too confusing. Okay, so when you'll notice in the layers panel when I add that, I have my parent layer here and then I have the child layer. So you see this white box that has appeared that says mask on it. And there's a little kind of thing in the corner as well that points out that it's a mask. So what does this mean? Nothing's happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our paintbrush. I'm going to grab my paintbrush. You can hit B on your keyboard as the shortcut if you want to do that. And the way masking works is you can basically conceal things or reveal things using black and white. So right now there's a mask applied. If I go to my color tab and say I went all the way to white and I started painting, nothing would happen because the mask is already revealed. Now if I take my slider here and I put it all the way to black and I were to start painting, the mask would start disappearing. Now the reason people use masking and not an eraser, because you could use an eraser to do this, but an eraser is destructive. So once you do it and you go and take a few other steps and come back to it, you can't revert your changes. You've already lost it. So you can't pull back what you've erased. With masking, you can pull you can pull things in, you can put them back, that's non-destructive. So you can do it um, any which way you like and the editing is always available to you. So as you can see, I'm painting in black. My, my brush settings as well, it's still a paintbrush. So if you don't know about paintbrushes, I'll leave the video below. But my opacity in the top left corner here is set to 100, my flow is 25, and my hardness is zero. And how your brush settings are affects how your masking works too. So if I were to bring my transparency or my opacity way down, and I started to paint, it wouldn't come off as quickly because the paint uh, brush isn't as strong. So always pay attention to your brush settings. I'm going to put mine up to 100 again. So black is concealing it. It's hiding the mask. And you'll see if you notice on the right hand side of my layers panel under mask you can see in black here what i'm actually painting so if i said okay i want to bring some of this mask back i didn't mean to remove that much i gotta go up to my colors panel in the top right corner i'm gonna go over to white and if i start painting you can see that it comes back so that is the basis of masking it's to basically hide things and bring them back conceal or reveal some people say so let's show you what an example of an empty mask is. I'm going to delete this. Now I have my layer selected that I want to mask on. I'm going to go down to my mask button right here. And this time I'm going to hit empty mask and just notice what happens when I do. So I had empty mask and now the, the actual physical mask on his ma physical mask on his face is gone. But if you notice the mask button this time, it's black. It's there. It's a, it's a child layer. It looks, it's, it looks to be the same as the previous one, but this one is black. Now what an empty mask does is it hides the mask by default and says, okay, I'm hiding. You can use white to bring me back. So it's the same thing as putting on a regular mask where it, it shows it and you can hide it. This one hides it by default and then you can bring it back to show it. There's no wrong answer. It's just however you want to do it. So considering this is a mask that's already hidden, if I paint in black, nothing's going to happen. You're not going to see anything. If I pull the slider all the way to white and I start painting, now the mask is coming back. And you might do, I'll go back here, you might do a sample like that or a reason like that is because you just want to bring a portion in. So say I just want to bring these goggles around his eyes, I would just paint that part in. Just like this. And say I did this and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm good with this, I'm a bit happy. But if you can see on his nose, if I zoom in, I don't want that line or these lines around here. I can flip back to black. There's a shortcut for this, but let's not worry about that right now. And in black, I can hide it again. So this is why masking is powerful. As I noted before, if you use an eraser, you can't do this kind of stuff. Once you erased it, that's how it works. You'll also notice in my layers panel, what I painted now is showing in white. 
So what I'm revealing is showing in white and what's hidden is shown in black. So I'm going to delete that and we'll go to another example. Okay, so we have a picture of this, uh, this gentleman, this guy here. Um, and what I have, I have him up top and below him I have a skull. So I'm just going to show you. So I have this skull underneath his head or behind his head. And I've kind of lined this up. So I'm just going to bring the opacity of the top layer down. So the skull is underneath him. So you can kind of see like this. And what I want to do is put a mask on this top layer. And I want to paint away some of him so the skull is being revealed underneath. So let's go ahead and put a mask on this first guy here. So I've got a mask. You'll notice in my layers panel, it's white because I'm putting a regular mask, not an empty mask. So it's white. And I'm going to paint in black because I want to paint away some of this guy. And I'll show you why that's uh, painting in white and black and being non-destructive is, is important. So I've got my paintbrush out. I'm painting in uh, I'm going to go to black. I'm going to bring my opacity down a little bit because I don't want it to be super strong. I want it to be a bit more subtle. So let's go 60%. Bring, maybe move my brush just a touch. And I'm just going to start painting away by this guy. And you can see as I'm painting, the part of this skull will start coming through. Maybe paint by his mouth here. Let's see what we got over here. Some teeth. Maybe up on his head a little bit. Now, say I painted this here and I thought this looks okay, but I don't love this part of his nose. I could paint in white and I could bring it back just kind of like this to make it look maybe uh, just a little bit better, right? So this is the main idea of masking, hiding things and revealing things to build the composition sort of that you're looking for. Let's paint a little bit more away under here. So there's just a quick example of some masking techniques to show you how that works. We'll do one more really quick. Uh, let's go to this last example here. <clears throat> and again, again, guys, you can see on the right hand side where I've painted it. Uh, it was um, revealed and I was concealing it with the black. So when I was painting the black, I was painting things away. So you could see what was underneath. And if I remove this layer, you'll see the skull is still there. If I take the mask off, this is what the mask is doing. And again, if I didn't like any of this, I could change my brush to white. I could remove it all. I could take turn to black. I could, I could, sorry, bring it to white, bring it all back. I could put, turn it to black. I could remove it all. All right, so let's go back to one more example. Okay, so this is a picture of a plane in Iceland that I took uh, on my phone like five years ago. Um, I've already isolated it, so uh, let me just unturn this picture off. So I have this isolated plane here. Not the best isolation in the world, but... This is just the plane, and now I'm going to put a. I want to put this in a landscape and make it sort of look like it blends in. So, um, I've got this winter backdrop here, and I'm going to take this plane and just like shrink it down, and maybe, uh, maybe do something like this. Put it over here. Maybe see if it looks like it's in the snow, sort of. So right now you just see that there's a plane cut out, not very great, sitting on a snow, snowy background, and we want to make it look at blend in a little bit. So I'm going to zoom in. And what we're going to do is we are going to add a mask to this plane. So I'm going to go down to my mask layer. I'm going to add a mask. You can see below my plane, there's a child layer, which is a mask. It's a white mask. So everything is showing. And if I start painting in black, it's going to start hiding it. So I'm going to get my paintbrush out. I'm going to go to black and I'm going to turn my opacity. No, my opacity is okay, actually. And what I'm going to do is just start chipping away at this plane by just painting it away a bit. So what I'm doing is as I'm painting this away, it's going to be revealing the background behind it because I'm hiding this, right? So I want this to look a little bit more like it's in the snow. When we zoom out, you'll see a better example of how it actually looks. But yeah, I want this to look like it's sort of buried into the snow and masking will let us do that. So let's just bury this guy. So 
he looks a little bit more stuck in the snow. And I'm gonna bring this brush up a bit and bring my opacity down a little bit just so it doesn't look so strong up here. But I just kinda wanna hide this a bit better. A little bit here maybe. So because it's pulling from the background, it should look a little bit more natural. I'm gonna zoom out. So now, it's not perfect, but if I take the mask off, it was just sitting on there, and now it's hidden a little bit, so it looks like it's a little bit more embedded in the snow. Let's zoom in and do maybe a little bit more just to really bury it here. And then I'll quickly add one little effect to it, which won't hurt. So now, it looks like this plane is sort of embedded in there. The lighting's not great. So again, I turn the mask off. It looks like that. And if had I done this with an eraser, if I had gone too far and I removed too much, I couldn't go back and change that. Masking will just, if I could flip to white, I can repaint things back. If I turn it to black, I can remove things. So I'm going to add one effect on this. Let's do maybe a curves adjustment. I'm going to drag my curves down here. And I'm going to bring it, make it a little bit brighter just so it matches the sky a bit better. Let's try that. So um, this is without the curves adjustment. It doesn't look bad actually. I'm not sure even which one looks better, but that's just, I just added a bit of brightness to it. So it blended in a bit. This is the mask on and off. And that is the essential idea of curves. Or, <laughs> sorry guys, that's the, <laughs> that's the essential idea of masking. So again, masking starts with a you mask, put in a mask on an image, and it doesn't it doesn't look any different. It stays there. It looks the same. But once you turn on your paintbrush and you start painting in black, you'll start painting it away. And the the amount you paint away is all going to depend on the opacity in your top um, left corner. <coughs> and you can flip back to white to paint it back. If you select mask, empty mask, whatever you have is going to disappear because it's hidden. So you'd grab your paintbrush, you go to white, and you'd start painting it back in using white. And again, if you made a mistake and you wanted to go to black to hide it, you can do that too. So once you get your your head around what masking is and how it works, it's super, super powerful. Um, it's non-destructive, and that's the really important part, is that you can make photo compositions, blend things together. If you make a mistake, you can add or remove at any time. I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you liked the video, please do me a favor and hit the like button. That would be awesome. And if um, this was helpful as well, maybe you could subscribe because I have more stuff coming. I'm just building up these videos um, to, to level up the learning until we can get to some really cool uh, compositions. And then I'd love to start seeing what people are doing. So thank you as always for watching, and I will see you in the next one.